let's talk about growth. And here is the um, amazing thing. We don't have an economic problem in this country. Even though we are not utilizing 20% of our productive capacity, even though we have millions of people that are unemployed or underemployed, our economy right now is producing $200,000 of GDP per family of four. This is an unbelievably productive economy already, even though it's not at full capacity. We don't have an economic problem, we have a distribution problem. So you need to keep that in mind when people are saying we need to grow the economy to resolve our problem. No, we already generate enough wealth uh, to support the entire population if we do it right. The problem is that all the wealth now is concentrated in the hands of the few. The other thing is when they say, well, it doesn't matter if there is a big difference in income and wealth as long as everybody is doing better, and they are implying that growth will lift, lift all the boats. But we've actually seen from the charts that growth has actually increased, not decreased, right? with growth. This period of time from 1979 to 2006, the economy grew a lot, in more than double in size. But the richer got richer, and the poorer, you know, relatively speaking, they got poorer. So, you know, growth enough is not a guarantee of, um, you know, equity or shared uh, prosperity. The other thing we need to keep in mind is that, uh, and I have a chart of this, almost all the benefits of economic growth now are captured by the top 1%. The other thing to uh, think about, and this is a study that I will go into a little bit more uh, next week, is that, um, as you know, the markets do not see what nature provides for free, right? It's like we breathe the air, we're not charged by nature for that service. We uh, draw water from the wells or from the rivers, we're not charged for that. You know, we take wood from the forest, we, we're not charged for that. So the market does not see what nature provides for free. And so there has been an attempt to at quantify what we get from nature for free in monetary terms. And in 2009, which is when we had all the, the data available, it turned out that on a planetary level, we were using $7.3 trillion of unpriced natural capital to generate our $60 trillion worth of economic activity worldwide. In other words, nature has been subsidizing our economic activity and our economic growth. So part of that economic growth is predicated on the destruction of natural capital on which we depend for our long-term survival.